Hey, I'm Brandon, and it's finally time for the long-anticipated racetrack debut for my new Twin Turbo build. I spent the entirety of last year taking this car to the next level. If you've seen my previous videos, you can appreciate the journey we took to get to this point. Now we already showed pretty outstanding performance in the dyno, and despite a relatively destructive conclusion, some important lessons were learned which I know will help us to be better, faster, and stronger going forward. Now all that's left is a quick two-step launch control check, and it's time to hold it to the floor. Alright, so that made five pounds of boost in a hurry, and I think we're time for our first attempt. Up to the staging lanes we go. And I'd love to say that it was all smooth sailing from here, but despite the beautiful sunset, this just wasn't the case. Let's rewind a little bit. Testing limits on the dyno resulted in some key takeaways that I integrated before my first runs. Now the Haltech Nexus ECU that I use allows me to impose a manifold pressure limit to prevent the overboost scenario which damaged the previous engine. As you can see here, my first run revealed that this limit is working properly. Several boost spikes there triggered an instant engine speed limit. And we made several other attempts at a clean run, but the boost control gremlins were persistent. So back in the pits, we came to the conclusion that the two solenoid boost control strategy was not completely effective as configured. The pressure decrease solenoid is holding residual pressure on the back of the wastegate and we were going in circles with PID control as a result. So a quick hardware change to remove the second solenoid and software change for basic duty cycle type boost control was implemented. These changes are in addition to a bunch of other hardware and software improvements we made to the car over the course of the weekend. Thanks for the help from my pit crew, Brendan and my dad, Tony. And always a good time hanging out with the neighbors. Brian Little Pickle, Mr. Trev, and of course, Uncle Don. We're also gonna get a uh, guest appearance from Mike and the Meth Stang. final two-step check, things are finally where they needed to be, head up to the lanes for what hoped to be our first real run down the quarter mile. Shooting, this run felt like a real breakthrough. The car left the line strong, shifted without interruption, and pulled cleanly to the quarter mile stripe. 
I knew that this shakedown run in eight pounds of boost had just scratched the surface of the car's new capabilities, but it was a big win having so many variables finally compute properly. It's hard to put into words what it feels like to sit at the top end of a racetrack after a run like that. I've always found it to be a unique experience as there's such an immediate and sharp contrast in senses and emotions. There's a profound silence and stillness that replaces the deafening noise and chaos that existed only moments before that. And as the adrenaline and intensity fades, so does the narrow and total focus required in the driver's seat. So this particular moment was filled with a flood of emotions for me. It was a culmination of a long and trying journey and it was just super meaningful to finally achieve this result. pressure, launch RPM and shift points were all increased and I was eager to see what this turbo motor could really do. This was a big milestone for us, my first 8 second time slip. And as you can see, the car was making big power, spinning the tire all the way into third gear, still going 588 in the 8th mile. Given that this was only around 12 pounds of boost, I was super excited to see what more of this combo could do. But first, the little pickle was up for a test run. After a quick look at the spark plugs and the fuel trims, everything looked perfect, so I tamed down the power a little bit through the first two seconds of the run and swung back around for one more shot. By the way, this is something I could never do as a nitrous car, so this is pretty cool.
So as you can see, things got a little sporty as the car lost traction around 900 feet down the track. Fortunately, I was able to recover and keep it pointed straight. Before that though, it was on an absolute rip, going 138 to 60 foot and 558 to the eighth mile at 130 miles per hour before lifting and coasting through the quarter. Overall, a fantastic opening weekend with numerous personal bests, which kept the enthusiasm up for our long ride home. But we wouldn't be home for long. In fact, we've already been back to the track with new upgrades and setting new records. But you'll have to subscribe to catch the next upload.